Hi everyone, welcome along to another video here on the channel. I'm Ash, you'll know me as Bromma18. Today we have version 2.0 of our realistic custom sliders here on FIFA 22. For those of you who haven't seen it, I had a version 1.0 of these sliders that I did probably a couple of months ago now. Um, and since then, obviously, we've had new gameplay updates and just playing with the game more. Um, I have since made some ch tweaks and changes. So we're going to run through them today. A um, couple of quick notices. First things first, these are sliders. So do they completely fix the gameplay? No, they do not. There are still a lot of issues and a lot of bugs. Um, but do they make it more tolerable, slightly more realistic? Yes, absolutely. Um, so we're going to go through that today. Also show you some settings that you can also use in your games as well to make them uh, more realistic. On top of that, if you haven't done so already, make sure to subscribe to the channel for regular gaming content from FIFA and PES 21. Um, ring the bell so you get notifications every time I upload. And check out my Patreon, where you can get access to a whole range of perks, including uh, exclusive FIFA 22 tactics videos, um, custom tactics tactics packages um, and all sorts of good stuff we've got a player scouting board as well which is real scout reports on a whole range of players in real life so really excited for that one so do go and check that out on that note let's show you the sliders so then first things first with the actual settings um, half length it's very important that we have either six or five minutes now i know some of you who do play longer games and longer halves will sort of be questioning this one but the reason why is that you've got to remember that it's just so hard to defend on FIFA for both the CPU and the player so there's just too many goals and to limit the amount of goals that are going to be conceding to stop it from being you know 4-4 every game you need to try and lower down um, or decrease the amount of minutes of each half so five or six minutes is really the sweet spot four minutes might be a little bit too short to be fair but i think five or six minutes will work as soon as you start going over that there's just too much time to score goals and that's very important the difficulty level i'll put it in the title already but these are for legendary or world class so do also bear that one in mind the reason why we don't do ultimate is because obviously it's still broken um and so they haven't fixed it so as a result sliders even them aren't enough, in my opinion, to try and make it a more tolerable experience. Competitor mode is off. That's very important as well. You don't want to go anywhere near that because it is just pretty ridiculous, to be honest. But player-based difficulty, now, you can decide this, but I think it's very important to have it on because then it's going to make a bit of a bridge and a bit of a gap between the average players and the superstar players and you want it when it comes to those superstar players to have that x factor you know that that bit of it factor i guess um to really change a game and you'll notice that they'll start to you know perform better touches better passes etc um you know more i guess unpredictable um situations and producing those moments so play based difficulty i think it's better to have it on the game speed is also slow and this is very important as well that's what we we change to stop it being so end to endy so arcadey you still have an element of that but it is heavily reduced with the game speed on slow right then also if we go over to the rules i also have handballs on except for penalties so obviously with handballs you want them on really for realism purposes but what i notice is because the game doesn't do a very good job of differentiating what actually is handball and what isn't you'll find that there are penalties being given and handballs being given for things that they're just not. They're not handball. You know, might be down by the player's sides, their arms, and they still get penalised. Might be accidental. Might be from a yard away. So I put them on, but then accept penalties. So you've got less game-changing situations, but you do still have that emphasis on trying to be as realistic as possible. So on to the big stuff then, the sliders themselves. Anyone who's used my first version sliders will notice some tweaks and changes here. So first things first with the sprint speed and the acceleration raised slightly now at 38 and 42. I've been tinkering these for a while um, in my Patreon Discord channel. And do go and check that out if you haven't done so already. There's some really good feedback from a couple of guys, um, a couple of patrons who were talking about perhaps increasing the sprint speed, making it 50. Um, I think it was 53, 53 was the sweet spot. The problem is I just find it too fast. Now, what you do find is there is an issue with player jockeying that has been brought up on the, the forums and stuff. Um, but again, the issue is that it's just so fast, it just becomes too end-to-endy, too arcadey. So I've, I've stuck with a reduced sprint speed and acceleration, um, 
the reason why the acceleration sprint speed are a little different is that we're trying to bear in mind that in those short situations players should be faster but in the long distance situations you're finding players need to be slowed down on the game um, but we don't want too much of a gap because for a lot of centre backs for example you'll find that their sprint speed is high but their acceleration is low because of the fact they might be tall and heavier um, so we didn't want too much of a gap in between them and it's the same for the CPU as well. Next up shot error this is up to 60 again trying to make it more challenging as well don't want to be able to just shoot from anywhere and score. Bear in mind that you should also be varying your shot type. So finesse shots, for example, driven shots, headers, volleys, all that sort of stuff. Remember that these only um, affect normal shots. So that's worth bearing in mind. Now with the opposition, it's up to 68. And the reason why it's different for the opposition and a bit higher is for that reason you will be using different types of shots, whereas the CPU don't. They're always lacing their shots. Occasionally, there might, might be a volley or header, but they never do finesse or, or low-driven shots. So we're increasing that a bit because that's where pretty much all of their goals come from. So again, we're trying to get that, that bit of more realism so that every time they shoot, they're not scoring. With the pass error, it's up to 58 for the user. Again, just trying to sort of introduce the fact that there will be you will give away passes you will give away balls it should be a bit more of a challenge to try and pass the ball and retain possession it shouldn't be easy um, and it's the same with the opposition as well but it's moved up to 62 because as the user you will probably try more risky passes anyway but the opposition don't they play it a bit more safe so as a result i boosted this up just a bit to 62 on the pass error for the cpu the shot speed is the same i decided to keep it as it is um, because again you can tamper with that and the opposition i found you know there wasn't really much changes i made that seemed to you know help the gameplay so in that sense i did leave it at 50. the pass speed is down to 40. again you can use driven passes to try and increase this now there's also an option where you can also increase the power bar slider um so that's up to you personally i found 40 to be nice again we're trying to compensate for the fact that the um movement speed the sprint speed acceleration is slower so as a result you have to compensate that with the pass speed as well because otherwise you're going to find the ball moving a lot quicker and your players moving a lot slower so this is down to 40 for both teams next on to the injury frequency it's still the same from my last video which was 70 i found this to be a really nice sweet spot um i haven't really had anyone say otherwise really i had one or two people say they're not getting injuries which i'm surprised about because i am and it's a, a realistic um you know sort of regularity as well it's also the same for the opposition on 70 keep the injury severity on 50 it's a bit more of a balance and a bit more of a gamble will it be long term is it short term um, but i've found this to be a, a really good sweet spot in the grand scheme of things next up onto goalkeeper ability boosted a little bit up to 56 and this is also um, for the cpu so for both user and cpu it's up to 56 again just to try and limit the amount of goals you can concede and score because again there's just so many goals but obviously i wanted to make sure that we got the right balance compared to making the goalkeepers like god and you just can't get past them so i boosted it just a little bit so you might notice it an incremental difference but nothing too drastic the positioning marking is up to uh 60 for the cpu and also for the user as well this was actually up to 70 at one point and i've had to decrease it because what you found is it was so extreme the marking was that you would find center backs coming out and marking like central midfielders it was really broken so as a result you were just finding so many gaps to counter attack at all times so i've lowered this down to 60 what we're trying to do here is make it so that you've not constantly got players free and open for both sets of teams particularly on your side as well where the central midfielders and the defensive midfielders don't mark well enough in this case i've tried to fix that a little bit there are still issues but like i say with sliders there's only so much you can do so please do bear that in mind the run frequency is down to 20 for the user but up to down to 30 for the cpu so for the user why it's down to 20 is one your tactics already you'll have players on getting behind and free roam and drift wide etc so you'll be creating your movement that way through your tactics um but with that in mind you don't want 
constant movement all the time because you're going to find it just too easy to counter attack on the opposition's getting behind all the time so we've lowered that down to 20. now with the opposition with a cpu on 30 the reason why that's a little bit higher is because obviously their tactics are different usually they've got the generic tactics have the cpu teams so you wanted to raise that a little bit but again not too much and it's still lowered because again you're trying to limit the amount of times teams can counter attack on each other we're trying to stop it being so end to endy all the time the line height is down to 46 and you know talking about all these here line height length and width tried tinkering them a lot but couldn't find the right balance really because again you've got to remember that tactics you know different tactics will create different situations you know your team might defend um, very narrow or they might be a little bit wider depending on their formation maybe they've got more players crowded in the central areas and so as a result i've tried not to think with these too much i've made little tweaks with line height it's on 46 for the user and also um, for the cpu as well the line length is on 40 for both teams um, and then the line height uh, or line width should i say is on 48 so there are little incremental differences there the only thing that's major is the line length what i tried to do here was decrease the amount of space that is in between each line and that's very important as well because you there's too much space for the opposition to play in between the lines and in those advanced pockets um so hopefully that has sort of fixed that issue the fullback positioning is still on 50 um, for both teams so do bear that in mind and in the first touch control error very very drastic we have gone all the way to 100 and the whole point of this was to try and make it so that you know your first touch wasn't fantastic all the time and i've still found even on 100 um you know there isn't enough error which is really really strange um but as a result we've obviously got to keep it at 100 to make sure that you know you can at least get a little bit of error in there so with that in mind you're trying to get more first touch area you're trying to make it so that it's harder to control the ball um you know doesn't always work but it is there so move this up to 100 try and make it as drastic as possible and hopefully you'll see a bit more of a realistic sort of interpretation from the gameplay with regards to how players control and bring the ball down it's also worth mentioning my uh, controller settings as well a couple of these off auto clearances auto shots off assisted headers on flare passes etc jockeying is manual um, you know with tactical defending as well again with the passing and stuff of all of this is on assisted if we go down here you'll see shot assistance cross uh, lob pass assistance all of that is on assisted um, you know i am going to start tinkering with changing this to semi and then manual um, and see how it plays out so that's worth bearing in mind as well if of course you are playing on on full manual for example or semi you may notice slight changes there. Just remember that I haven't tested it with those settings. So I am going to start trying to utilize that and see if the experience is a bit different. So with that in mind, that does bring this video to a closing, guys. If you've got any questions about the sliders, please do let me know. And any feedback as well, that's very, very important. Please give me your feedback. Um, and if you find problems with the gameplay, let me know um, so that I can try and make those tweaks and make those changes because you know, obviously I'm only one person and other people might find the game um, different to me because they just of the nature of how people play the game. Um, so please do bear that in mind, drop me your feedback, make sure to subscribe to the channel and ring the bell so you get notifications every time I upload. Don't forget to leave a like on the video if you've enjoyed it and check out my Patreon where you can get access to a whole range of great perks. Have a look at all the links in the description such as my Twitter, give me a follow on there and my affiliate links as well where you can get access to all of my equipment and gear. Great way to support the channel as I do get a little kickback from anything that you do buy. On that note, we are going to round the video off there. Thank you so much for watching and until until next time, I will see you soon.